Hi, everyone. Dr. Elizabeth Bonet here. Dr. Liz, welcome to the Hypnotize Me podcast. Before we jump in, please note that the podcast is not mental health treatment, nor should it replace mental health treatment. If you need psychotherapy or hypnotherapy, please seek treatment from a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so please feel free to contact me through my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Hi everyone, Dr. Liz here. You can hear the rain in the background, but my schedule is so tight this week, so packed that this is really the time that I have to record. So I'm recording with the rain in the background. At least the construction that was going on next door stopped. (laughs) At least temporarily, I actually had to reschedule a podcast interview that I was doing because right before I jumped on this really loud construction started next door. And I'm like, oh my God, like what's going on here? I did not have time to run to my office and do it there. So that one's coming up with Elliot Rowe. And he is going to give us some secrets about poker and high performance. And that's going to be a really fun interview. My husband's a poker player and I know you're out there. I never really got into it myself, but he loves poker and golf. Apparently the two go together quite often. Today, I invite back to the podcast, Enthusa Helena. She was also interviewed on episode 160. Around this time last year, it aired April 10th, 2020, about medical intuition. Dr. Helena is a holistic medical consultant and spiritual life coach. She has 43 years of professional experience in the field of integrative medicine and is a medical intuitive and an ordained minister. She has some really good information and advice for us around dealing with grief in the time of COVID. Let's jump in. All right. Hi, Anthusa. Welcome to the Hypnotize Me podcast. Welcome back. Yes. Thank you. So I know that you have a series on grief that has just come out and I had a request. Somebody emailed in and said, hey, could you do an episode on grief? And then right after that, I got your newsletter about it and I was like, oh, perfect. So I really would like to talk about that today and how to help people handle grief. Um, We've had quite a lot of it in this past year. This is airing in like early 2021. Yes. Um, Just to update your audience and hello, good morning, or whatever time of day it is for you out there. I'm grateful uh, that uh, to be able to share with you today, and I hope you're all well and safe. I guess about nine months ago, a little bit into the global um, pandemic, I was wanting to help people. So I did a self care. video series. And then I went into an emotional video series, which covered fear, anger, and grief. I look at all these from a little bit of a different perspective because I am a, um, a reverend. Mm -hmm. So even though I do a lot of research and write up, um, material for a newsletter, Uh, that is more based on facts, research, psychology, medicine, etc. I also do additional uh, videos to give the flip side of, um, you know, something that would be more of a spiritual realm to be of assistance. So grief is what you wanted to talk about. And basically, grief is a painful regret. It's a suffering or a distress over an affliction or a loss. And grieving is a very natural process. It's healthy for us to take time to grieve whatever loss we are experiencing. Now, that loss can come from a physical level, meaning a death of a lost one, or a social realm, which could be for example, a divorce or an occupational situation, which bees 
the loss of a job or the mm -hmm. opportunity to work. And I think all of us uh, through this past recent year uh, have had some sort of effect in e any or one of these areas. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So underneath grief, um, it has a basis of many emotions that will arise for you, which also can give you this feeling of overwhelmedness or confusion or loss or being kind of unsafe or, or untrusting in the world. And just to name a few that underlying that is also there in the grieving process would be anger, guilt, anxiety, sadness, and often despair, mm -hmm. which that's a lot for a person to handle. Yeah, it is. Now, also the universal themes of loss can be, I'm going to cover them all, but then I'm going to focus on one area that's more spiritual for you so that you can take these challenges and opportunities to help you have personal growth and more freedom and liberation in your life. Right. So the basic themes universal of loss are abandonment, loss of identity, loss of meaning, loss of purpose, and or fear of death. They kind of all fall into the same category, but often you're looking at one and then the other one comes up to be able to clear or to be brought to the light of consciousness. Because what's hidden within our unconscious or subconscious mind is our wounds. And then something happens to trigger those wounds that have been hidden, and they can come up like opening up a, a floodgate for a person. And healing this is to bring these hidden wounds to the light of consciousness, the light of awareness. Awareness is very curative. So I urge people to make this more of a simple process. Mm -hmm. Once it comes up, you know, don't go looking for it. Once it comes up into your consciousness, it's bringing your attention through awareness. And then the most important thing is to actually walk through feeling your mm -hmm. feelings. Yeah, that's really difficult for people. Oh, it's difficult for me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I've been doing it all my life. Thank you. <laughs> you know, yeah. I know the challenges. I'm not saying this is easy. It it's actually takes a lot of courage and bravery to uh, work to heal yourself and to become more uh, consciously awakened and aware in the process. Mm -hmm. I think healing and conscious awakening go hand in hand. I don't think you can do one without the other, because once you're starting to heal, uh, you have to pay attention to what's coming up in your uh, awareness. And as you start to process these feelings by walking through them and feeling deeply these emotions, mm -hmm. uh, then you start to personally grow and evolve and become more conscious and awakened. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know sometimes medical doctors will try to medicate grief and that all that does is really delay it, you know, or people try to cover it with, you know, drugs or alcohol or, you know, they, it's really difficult for them to sit with the feelings. It is. So I love that framework that you put on it. Like, all right, this is coming to consciousness and with awareness, you grow in consciousness as well mm -hmm. with healing. Yeah. Yes, I don't want to. I mean, I think there are times we actually do need some help from, uh, you know, regular medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, like you said, to be aware that it, it's kind of masking it and keeping it hidden. Mm -hmm. So if you need that for a, a temporary period of time, just have mercy and compassion for yourself and realize that it's okay. And when you feel a little bit more ready or comfortable in your skin, to really truly heal, you need to feel those feelings at the mm -hmm. depths and core of your inner being. Yes. So um, just for example, I'm, I'm going to cover the three areas because I'm trying to help people actually gain their wisdom 
through the eyes of their divine spirit or source, the God of their own understanding. That sees life differently as opposed to our humanness seeing life. Our humanness tends to not really be able to see the lessons we're supposed to learn or that the that there is mercy and love underneath it all and that uh, source is really leading us to a more greater life mm -hmm. uh, so for example fear the opposite or what source would see is coming to truth when you know truth you tend to alleviate some of that heaviness of fear. Mm, okay. Now with anger, we're looking through the eyes of source at unity. When you get angry at a situation or someone, you create separateness. And mm -hmm. so you don't see the unity that source is showing you. When you start to see that you and the other or you and the situation are one, then you're able again to alleviate some of the fear or process it a little easier for yourself. And now for the reason why we're talking today, grief, the source sees that as a return to source, a return to the truth of who you really are, your divine essence. And in the grieving process, um, we do during the return feel deep remorse and regret for what has just been presented to ourselves. And that goes back to what we just said. It's mm -hmm. very challenging and difficult to actually be courageous and walk through your feelings. Life is our medicine and it, brings us exactly what we need and exactly the right moment and timing in our lives. And if we can uh, have the courage with mercy and compassion for ourselves to take each moment that life is presenting the situation for us to have this healing and medicine, we will realize we're not overwhelmed, but once you start not listening to your life experience and your trigger, it piles up like a, a great big, you know, piled up piece of uh, dirt. Mm -hmm. And then you you just get like, oh, there's too much to handle. I can't handle it all. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You need <clears throat> yes. In the present moment and as much as you can, every moment when something comes up to be able to, to sit back and go inward and ask, what is source uh, teaching me? What is source wanting from me? Why is this happening and being presented at this moment in, in time? Do you agree? Oh, yeah. I, um, I'm not a grief expert, so I'm just listening in fascination here. I mean, I do know some about it because I don't think you could be a um, psychotherapist or psychologist without knowing about grief but it's really not my specialty area. So I feel like I'm learning so much and this is a different frame than, than I think I've learned in the past. I really love this sense of going to source, even asking the question, what is source trying to teach me here? What, what is the purpose of this lesson really? Um, I do have a question about yes. people who do not have a sense of regret, like perhaps they have a sense of relief. Perhaps there's been a long death process or it is uh, something that's been super painful for the person passing away. And so there's this sense of relief. Do they have less of a grief process? Or I, I don't want to call it less, but well, I do want to say, do they have of a less painful grief process than someone who um, was not really prepared for that. Yeah, the sudden, the sudden loss. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Well, um, actually, I personally have gone through this uh, within the last um, nineteen uh, months of my my life because of uh, a family member. Mm -hmm. And in psychology, um, 
that is actually called anticipatory grieving. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you get a diagnosis uh, that possibly is terminal. Uh, I guess it would be terminal in this situation. And they're given a time frame on how long they feel from the medical realm that, you know, they'll be able to still have life. And so, you know, as the person that's a family member or loved one, during that process, however long it is, three months, a year, two years, you have time. You have time to grieve. You have time to make amends. You have time to to be with your loved one and feel co- more complete, as opposed to that sudden, oh my, what happened? You were here mm-hmm. one day and you're gone the next. That is uh, much more shocking and overwhelming. So, did that answer your question? It does. Yeah. So it is a a different process. Than yes. When someone has an unexpected or sudden death happen to someone close to them. Yeah. Well, well, for me, I had gotten information that a, a person, it was sudden information, but family member was given three months uh, to well, live. That's short. And uh, uh, actually they're still living. So, you know, we're, we're very blessed, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, uh, but it's like, as soon as I heard that, yeah, I have to be honest with the audience. I cried for three months nonstop. I mean, sure, I wow. had a, a break in between. Yes, but it, yeah. it, it, it's that sh- it's that sh- sudden bolt or jolt. Yes, and and, and you're like and you're and me from my perspective, I was, um, you know, thinking about oh, uh, everything in my past history and during my whole lifetime in relationship with this person and. And feeling as a spiritual person myself, uh, you know, what what can I do during this short period of time to uh, not only make myself feel complete, but the other as well? Mm-hmm. So um, I hope I answered your question. And absolutely. Yeah. So uh, again, I, I don't want to say that I'm an expert in, in grief, like you just mentioned that uh, about yourself. I uh, am more of an expert. Uh, I have my doctorate in spiritual counseling and uh, energy psychology. So I, my whole purpose of, of my business, Soul Light, is to help people be connected more with source and the truth of who they really are Mm -hmm. in through integrative medicine modalities that uh, are all medically proven and researched. I've been certified by all medical doctors. And it's more of a process of a journey, like I'm a guide to help you get more connected with your, your spirit, with source, but also to really remember the truth of who you are and to feel more empowered and complete within yourself as well. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm more of coming from that uh, spiritual uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does someone handle grief? So what is the first thing that they can do to help themselves? Yes. Okay. This grieving process, again, can be very challenging because it, it, in my experience, it it was like somewhat having my own in quotes, judgment day, not, not to be like in quotes, religious, but it's like a life review. You start to recall milestones of the best and worst situations in your life during which you usually, again, feel sincere remorse and regret. So I would say some of the most important points in this process is first acceptance, Mm -hmm. accept life as it is, what life is presenting to you, not easy to do, and then surrender to that, which is another not easy to do. Yeah, yeah. But in that process, you know, do realize that the process is to grieve the specific loss or situation that's happening. That's going to get you more into the healing or healthy state and also more consciously aware. Mm. So 
these may sound a, a little bit, uh, well, I've heard this before, but surrender really is the key. Yeah, it reminds me of the, I talk a lot on the podcast about radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's not just acceptance, it's really surrender. That's what you're talking about. Yes, like that, I that radically is radically accept that this is going on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and hard. It's a hard process. I have to use it all the time in my own life, like you said yeah. before. Of all right, this is what's happening. This is what life is presenting me with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, our human our humanness doesn't like that at all. I mean no. we can <laughs> We we could right. we could we could call it our ego, but you know, too many people and even myself has kind of bashed the ego uh, a bit. And ego actually serves a purpose. It's helping us. It wants us to, and also itself, mm -hmm. to come into the light of consciousness and and awakenedness because it's been sitting hidden with all these, you know, preconditions, beliefs, uh, beliefs, and traumatic experiences and. Um, and all this comes also from our culture, our ancestry, where we live in the world. It's mm -hmm. not just us. It's us also feeling mass consciousness mm -hmm. and, and what has gone on in our lineage and ancestry. That's why I say uh, you really try to have mercy and compassion on yourself one, or with yourself. One of my teachers, I was amazed with, uh, years ago when they said this, they said, 98% of what you're processing is not yours. Mm, wow. Imagine that's a huge percentage. So really, if you cleared up all this other stuff that's mm -hmm. not yours, you really only have about one or two percent that you know you you're came. responsible for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's hopeful. Right? Except it doesn't work that way. You know? <laughs> it doesn't feel that way. Right? No, it doesn't feel that way. I mean, sometimes uh you know, just as a healer and also in my own life, I, I get very uh, upset. Let's say my ego gets for upset. I'm like, why am I doing this for everybody else? I don't want to do this for everybody else. I get like a little child that's having a, a tantrum. Uh -huh. you know? And then I have to remember and step back, look through the eyes, the secondary. Don't look at always the primary of what's right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. take, a, take a breath, step back sit in silence for a moment, find some peaceful way you can, whatever brings you peace, take a walk in nature, you know, just sit and look at the sky. Uh, if you're a Floridian, go to the beach. I mean, mm -hmm. whatever, some people like to exercise, whatever brings you that sense of silence and stillness and peace, then, then you can take that moment and look through the eyes, the secondary cause, look through the eyes of source. That's where you'll find your wisdom. Mm, beautiful. Did that help? Yeah. Did that help answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the other things about surrender is step one, admit that you're powerless. Mm -hmm. We don't like to do that either. No, no. <laughs> Let go of control. Nobody likes to be in control mm -hmm. uh, or out of control. Yes. But really the truth is, is uh, what people don't like to hear and myself either. We really don't have any control. So mm -hmm. if you can really realize that at least a little bit or occasionally remind yourself, really, I'm not in control of what's happening. Uh, believe again in a power that's greater your, than yourself, which is, you know, source and decide to turn your will over to source as opposed to your having conflict about your personal will and what you want, as opposed to what life is presenting you. Uh -huh. Do, is that, is that helpful? Yeah, I am. My brain's a little stuck on that. We have no control. So <laughs> I know, I know. I always <laughs> I'm very con uh, you know conscientious <laughs> about when I see that because that's going to trigger everybody. And I yeah. I think from a spiritual sense. Yes. I get what you're saying. Yes, right? yes. And I, and these very sound very similar to the 12 steps as well, right? Like yes, all right, yes. surrendering control, right? Yeah. Admitting you're powerless. Yeah. Like this is in the context of grief, it's like we don't 
control what happens no. to other people, to us often. But there's a piece for me where it's like, when I tune in, I think, okay, what can I control here? So that, right. you know, wisdom to know the difference, right? Mm -hmm. What can I change? And that is always a hopeful place for me. So even last night, I was didn't sleep great because I was worrying about something and I kept waking up and I woke up this morning and I thought, okay, um, what do I need to do here? Like, right. what can I control? And I needed to make a list of all the different tasks under this particular thing that was worrying me. Like, I need to get that on paper and that right, right. helps me. I'm a list maker. Right? Like, Me too. Yeah. So it's like, I guess that's the part where if people feel like they have no control, they often go into helplessness. Yes. Okay. I'll, right. Let me clear that up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course. Um, of course, that's part of surrender. And yes, we need to take action. So that's where we actually do have control. Uh, but what I'm trying to say, as far as um, we don't have control. We really don't know what's going to happen next in our lives and what we're going to be faced with, whether it's a loss of a job, a divorce, a, a loved one. That's sort of the bigger scope of we don't have control. Oh, yes. Uh, right. Yeah. Like nobody. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, my Lord, I was doing fine. I could feed my family. Then a pandemic came and yes. I, I have, you know, I'm <laughs> right. I don't know what, what to do. How do I, how do I take care of my children and stuff? I mean, that, that's what I mean by you have no control. Got because, it. Yes. But, but also remember life and, 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 and source is always loving, compassionate, and merciful. And that we're here on this planet. Uh, if, if you believe this, uh, to learn our life lessons and to evolve. So it's like a gift that, um, source gives us Every time we have a, a situation or a challenge to face, yes, and everybody's yeah. everybody's situations different. Whatever's going to come up, so yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah, there's no control over. Oh, I know five years from now, this is exactly how much money I'm going to have in the bank, and you know, this is the house I'm going to be living, and you know, I'll have this job until X and X amount of time. Well, you really don't have control, and you really don't know that because look suddenly life can change. Absolutely. But yes, you do have to be responsible and take action. And that's where you do have control. Like something's okay. worrying you all night. I get it. That happens to me too. You have to be responsible and accountable to take yourself out of the problem and into the solution. And yes. how do you do that? Yeah, you and I do it by making a list. Right. <laughs> right. Other people do it in different ways. But yes, that's where we actually do have control. So I, I'm not okay. trying to, uh, I, I totally realize that uh, when I say that, people misunderstand me because I'm looking at it from a bigger picture, a more spiritual mm -hmm. realm. So well, I thank think you. Yeah, I think too, and I understand everyone has their own beliefs, but something that gives me solace mm -hmm. is thinking, I chose this. Mm -hmm. Like in some, before I came into this life, before I chose this body, yeah. I chose some of these struggles. Not that we yes. don't have free will in there and things vary, yes. but it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I I chose this. Um, I chose these kids. I chose, or they chose me, right? We, yes. We had an agreement Yes. I chose this partner, we had an agreement. Yes. Um, so sometimes that gives me solace in the face of real difficulty. Most definitely. But you know, you and I, I, I agree with what you just said, but a lot of people don't uh, totally believe that, yeah, before we came into uh, this earthly plane that our souls are ready uh, kind of outlined the lessons we were going to learn yeah. and, and the situations we we were going to encounter to help us evolve and become yes. conscious and to be more of service to ourselves, humanity, and our loved ones. So yeah, I agree with that statement you made. And I don't know about the rest of the world. <laughs> right. Really yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I like to think so because that would be, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I like people that resonate with what I believe in, but you know, that doesn't mean that my beliefs are correct or be- best. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yes. I'm well aware of that for myself as well. Like who yeah. knows really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. And holding space for all kinds of beliefs there. So, uh, yes, I, I just, uh, always, uh, want people to be encouraged that to try to find that silence and to silence your mind in, in these difficult situations in whatever way you can, if you know how to meditate or uh, meditation is always good. Um, you know, breath, just even taking a deep breath in and exhaling slowly. Everybody knows how to breathe. I mm-hmm. think, you know, it's more important, uh, to take a, a a shorter breath in and to really slowly exhale to help you uh, calm down your nervous system and come to a more neutral uh, space of mind, you know, less reactive, which mm-hmm. would bring you into that um, stillness and silence as well. And then um, prayer, you know, or contemplation, which is sort of like meditation, but a bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, doing whatever you can that you like to take a moment from the maybe heaviness of what is happening. Uh, like I said, walk in nature, go to the beach, exercise, whatever um, is the person has to know what's going to help them themselves and what they like to do that's going to bring them back into a less reactive mind. Yes. Into a more peaceful state. And it's it's when we're in that peaceful, neutral mind that we get the answers and can can take those those steps to write a list down. Mm-hmm. How do I get back into control? How do I, you know, get get into the solution as opposed to the problem? When we're just in chaos and confused and our nervous system is is, you know, on alarm, uh, you you can't think clearly. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, cool. everybody's a little bit different in what they do. So that's why knowing yourself is really one of my key things, uh, is most important is what mm-hmm. I kind of talk about. So, yes, well, we are coming to the end of our time. Could you tell people about this course that you have out and how to find you? Yes. Uh, everybody can find me through my website, which is www.soullight. That's S O L L I T E.com. Uh, it's totally explanatory, maybe a little bit too much explanatory with details, but I offer private sessions, which are the counseling sessions and also, uh, various training programs. My longest training program is a six month practitioner training. So that really takes a lot of commitment and um, mm-hmm. and time. And it was originally put together for professionals only, but other people um, who are on a journey and committed can also join in after we see if they're the right fit for the right reasons. I also have shorter programs for them that are less costly and three are one month and one is two month programs. So that's uh, under the link of specialty programs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can contact me through there and I'm on social media venues, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. I have a jam packed YouTube channel that's full of free educational information and helpful things like the self-care series and the um, emotional series uh, we just talked about. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing a hope and inspirational uh, series um, just last week, I think, uh, to help people get through these challenging times and work as best I can to give them hope and inspiration. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast again. I really enjoyed our conversation. So did I. And thank you so much. It's always great to see you. And and I appreciate your invitation. And God bless everybody out there that's listening, all the viewers. Please keep safe and well. And just know that Source is loving, merciful, and compassionate, and always looking out for your highest and best goodness and interest. Thank you.
I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace.